NA1SS, this is K0ASH. K0ASH, NA1SS, this is K0ASH, NA1SS, I have you a little broken. QSL, uh, we want to wait here about another 30 seconds before we begin questions? Yeah, that'd be great, thanks. It's very good, how's the view from up there, Clay? Is this mad? It's pretty awesome. Yes, it is, great to hear from you. You too, buddy, thanks for doing this. We're all excited down here and ready to roll. All right, I think the signal's pretty good, so uh, I'm ready for the questions down there from Ashland Greenwood High School. Okay, QSL, here we go, Clay. Hi, this is Sandra Robot. What happens if someone becomes ill on your mission? Over. Well, we have a doctor, Ali Kotov, on board, so if anybody gets sick, he knows exactly what to do for us. Over. Hi, this is Gunnar. Did being in space make you nauseous at first? Over. Hey Gunnar, uh, no, actually when I launched on the shuttle back in June, I didn't get sick at all. I had no nauseous feelings ever, so I was very excited. Over. Hi, this is Alex, and I was wondering what your shuttle ride was like and how hard it was on your body. Over. The shuttle ride was pretty darn cool. Um, it was hard on my body when we hit three times the force of gravity because I started to weigh three times my body weight, which is about almost 600 pounds. So it was kind of heavy, but uh, it was very bumpy and very loud, but it was very, very exciting. Over. Hi, this is Sam. What research projects are you doing in, on in space? Which ones will affect the people in Nebraska? Over. Right now, Sam, I'm growing lots of plants. I'm growing lettuce, I'm growing basil seeds, and some today that I don't even know what they are. And I'm hoping with all the agriculture in Nebraska, those people will help to figure out great ways to grow plants on the way to Mars. Over. This is Andrew. Um, was scuba diving part of your astronaut training? Over. Yes, it was, Andrew. Uh, I learned how to scuba dive so that I could go into the big swimming pool at NASA called the NBL, the Neutral, Neutral Buoyancy Lab, and practice spacewalks. I also had to learn to scuba dive so I could go down and live underwater with the NEMO project at the uh, Aquarius Habitat in Florida for two weeks. Over. Hi, this is Molly. What do you do for spare time in space? Over. Hey Molly, uh, actually I don't think I have a lot of spare time in space, but when I do get a few free moments, uh, I like to uh, read email and call people on the telephone we have up here, and I'm also trying to learn to play guitar a little bit and play the piano that's on board, over. This is Stephanie. Were your cars with language in order to communicate with your crew members, over? Yes, Stephanie. Uh, as part of my training, I had to uh, learn to speak some Russian. Uh, I've got a long ways to go, but uh, I can do it uh, reasonably well. There's a certain level you have to reach to be able to fly in space. Over. Uh, this is Ben. How is physical, physical activity affected while in space? Do you burn more calories? Do you have better stamina? Do you, how's your heart rate and blood pressure? Would you rather have like a sports practice in space or on Earth? Over. Well, first of all, Ben, I'd rather have uh, the football practice on Earth than in space because uh, I can throw a lot tighter spiral on the ground with, with gravity. <laughs> Um, my heart rate is about normal, and my blood pressure changes a little bit while your body figures out where to pump the blood with no gravity. But uh, we work out two hours every day, uh, either with uh, physical uh, rubber bands like uh, weightlifting, or we use a treadmill and a bicycle. So I probably burn about the same number of calories, although I've lost a little weight and I doubt my stamina is as good. Over. Well, Serena, just like we said, there's a treadmill on board and there's a riding uh, bicycle we can pedal on. And we also have this uh, system kind of like uh, rubber bands that we use to do the bench press and squats and keep our muscles and bones in shape. Over. Hey, this is Ruder. What do you do for entertainment? Over. Well, Gunnar, it's pretty cool on board. We can have movies set up to us. We can watch sports programs and we can also watch TV programs. And then there are books up here to read and magazines. So. Uh, we have a pretty good source of entertainment for the most part. Over. Hi, this is Alex. What was the hardest thing to adjust to being in space? Over. For me, Alex, the hardest thing to adjust to is being away from my family and my kids and my friends. Uh, the second hardest thing to adjust to is trying to do normal tasks that you do on the ground without gravity. It makes it a lot different and more challenging. Over. Hi, this is Sam. What is your favorite thing to eat? Sam, my favorite thing to eat is dessert, and my special favorite dessert is chocolate pudding cake. Whenever that comes into the menu, I try to gobble up one of those when I can. Over. Hi, this is Sam. What is your favorite thing to eat? Over. 
This is Andrew. I heard many Boy Scouts became astronauts. Were you a Boy Scout? Yes, sir. I was a Boy Scout back in Ashland, Nebraska. I made it to the rank of first class, and uh, Lloyd Edwards, uh, who's still a resident in Ashland, was our troop leader for many, many years. Hi, this is Molly. What is the importance of exercising often in space? Over. It's really important, Molly, because when we come home after four to five to six months in space, our muscles and our bones are going to be a lot weaker. So we exercise to try to keep them as strong as we can so that when we come home, we don't injure ourselves or get permanently hurt uh, due to our weakened condition. So we want to rehabilitate as quickly as possible. Over. This is Stephanie. Were you required to learn mechanical skills in order to work on the space station? If so, what parts would you have to do? Over. Yes, yeah, Stephanie, we did have to learn some things I hadn't done before. One of those was soldering, and uh, I learned how to solder on the ground, but I haven't had to use that skill on board, so it might take me a while to figure it out again. Over. This is Ben. How was your goal of going space, space, which to some may seem like a lofty and near impossible goal that became reality, affected how you go about attaining and setting other goals in life? Do you work towards those goals any differently? Over. I think the one thing that I learned uh, stand from uh, all this was that perseverance pays off. You have to work hard and you have to stay at it. So any goals that I set after I come home from being on the space station, I'll try to apply those same principles. Over. Hi, this is Trina. Do you see the sunrise or sunset every day? And if you do, what color do you see? Over. Yes, Serena, we orbit the Earth every 90 minutes, so we see a sunrise and sunset 16 times every day, and the colors are awesome. They're deep, dark blues and purples and bright oranges, yellows, and reds. It's very gorgeous. Over. Hi, this is Gunnar. How well do you get along with the people you work with? Over. Well, Gunnar, I think pretty well. They haven't tried to kick me off the station yet, so uh, <laughs> we have a good time. We laugh a lot and we talk a lot, so it's a great place to live. Over. Hi, this is Alex. What is the first thing you want to do when you get back to Earth? Over. Well, Alex, right after hugging my wife and giving her a kiss and hugging my two kids, I want to have a Nebraska corn-fed T-bone steak with a baked potato. Over. Yeah, it's actually a lot of fun to sleep in space. We float, so we climb into our sleeping bags, and that's how we stay against the wall. And I actually float and sleep with my head to the ceiling and my feet to the floor rather than uh, laying on my back. Over. This is Andrew. Do you get dehydrated in space? Over. Andrew, you can get dehydrated in space just like you can on the, on the ground. So we're encouraged by our doctors to drink a lot of fluids while we're in space. So we don't have that problem. You wouldn't want to have a kidney stone and be stuck up here in space. Over. This is Molly. If you were working with tools on the space station and lost hold of one, what would happen to it? Well, first, Molly, I'd yell a lot. And then uh, it depends on what you were doing with the tool when you let go of it. Whatever force you had on that tool, that's what will make it go in a given direction. So it's possible that it could zip away from you and you have no idea where it went. Or if the force was small, it could be floating there right next to your hand, over. This is Stephanie. When you're on Earth and working with NASA, is it hard to maintain your personal life, or is it like the military would have no personal life at all? Over. I think, Stephanie, that it was pretty easy for me to uh, have a family life and a personal life. You know, sometimes I had to make sacrifices, but most of the time I was able to go to my kids' ball games and my daughter's gymnastics and that sort of thing without any trouble, over. This is Ben. What areas of your high school career helped you achieve your goal of being an astronaut? And now that you are in space, and when you come back, what will be next in your career? I think, Ben, the thing that helped me the most was doing lots of different things. At school, I guess, the green ones, I could be in drama, I could be in the sports, I could be in science club, I could be uh, in band, and be in the music, I could do all that stuff. This is K0SH Clear. Thank you very much, Clay. All right. Good job. Awesome. I got one more minute left. So. Hey, Dottie. Oh.